These are some of the best and most creative robots that FTC teams have made this entire decode season. This is just wild. We're going to take a look at the fastest auto rotating turret that I have seen all season and some really impressive autos and some autos that might seem really impressive, but may not actually be a good strategy in the long run. I'm Coach Pratt and I've been teaching robotics and design for over a decade now. I know that sometimes the best way to get the creative juices flowing in your own robotics design cycle is by taking a look at what other teams have come up to. So let's take a look. The first robot here we have is from Wolves Robotics, and this is just wild. Like, it starts out quite slow, but check out just how quick they've got their PID controller working so they can have this auto-aiming turret. Absolutely wild, some seriously impressive stuff with just how quick this turret's able to rotate itself around and then look back. Uh, I think as teams go forward into the season, taking a look at this and being able to have a turret that rotates itself back quickly especially in a high defense season that's going to face like this, it's definitely something that's going to be very advantageous for teams. Excellent work on that, Wolf Robotics. Next up, we've got a robot from VPS Novobots. Uh, they've got a catapult that they've set up with just a couple quick rubber bands. And I think it's interesting just to take a look at the viability of some of these as well. They've got some nice close-up shots of how they've actually designed their catapult and how you might be able to create one of these in a very similar quick short kind of idea it's nice work on this i also want to take a look at team iron lions here uh, they've got in a slow motion video they've got a quick section here on how you might start actually getting a bit of an air sort working on now they're from a quite close distance so i think that's something to keep in mind here but they've got two that are launching quite high and then one that's launching back with quite a heavy amount of backspin in a difference, but it is pointing to the idea that there may be some viability in the concept of air sorting. I think one of the big things that teams are going to have to focus on here, especially when it comes to doing that motif patterning, is just I, I think teams are going to have to give themselves a little bit more time when it comes time for something to show up into, the, into that goal because it's going to take more time for your robot and for not for the robot, for the balls to be bouncing around inside that goal to make sure they all actually fall into that correct order. So I think that this motif is going to be a bit more of a challenge, especially because you have to work with your partner so much on that. Next up, we've got team 13748. Uh, one of the cool things I want to highlight about this robot is that they not only have a pretty effective looking shooter, they've got it running just off of a chain drive here, uh, as well as a pretty effective intake using some holonomic or omni drive wheels here, it looks like. But they also have a lot of driver notes here. So I don't believe this is Thomas. I believe this is driver controlled. But I love seeing LEDs or LEDs set up to let your driver know in a very clear location that your flywheel is up to a certain speed and you're actually ready to launch. I think that's going to be a really big one this season so that your drivers know that they're actually able to run themselves off. I'm not quite sure what their lead pattern is here. Perhaps they have a, a more obvious lead pattern. I might use something or keep your, it looks to me like their, their values are a little bit too close to the sun because you can kind of see it rotating between yellow and orange quite quickly. So perhaps there's something else that I'm missing here. Maybe the team can let us know in the comments down below. Something else I want to share here is from team 23849. They pointed out a really interesting note here on terms of the gates. So this one is having the gate auto opening. I'm not sure if other teams have noticed this as well this season. One thing I have noticed is that there's quite a bit of difference in this gate and that you, that gate plate where that arm actually runs up is also really, uh, it's rather uh, shallow or not even shallow. It, it's not very rigid. So it's quite easy to bend it and change the geometries at which that uh, gate actually ends up opening up. Some gates I've seen have gates auto opening and then more balls are able to run through some gates i've seen you have to have the robot physically holding on that gate mechanism the entire time so i think it, it it's going to be some sort of inconsistency this season is being able to take a look at to make sure these gates are the same uh, especially when robots run into these things so hard and that gate starts to rotate and pivot itself so i'm curious if there's any sort of angles that has to be 90 degrees or something along those lines uh, to keep those things a little bit more consistent Next up on some uh, intakes here, we have Team I Ironic or Ironic, depending on how it is you want to say it. Uh, they've got a rubber brand intake. I like having a little bit of compliance on that front. It's quite nice. It's just kind of gravity fed leading it down. But they've got a sort of uh, a small little indexer here on a quick little platform. 
or to be able to rotate things around. Now, I, I quite like this design here to be able to have that top gate actually fall itself down. And we will go back, take a look at the end there. I like that the turret itself is able to open itself and then reclose itself and reopen itself back up again. I think that's a really unique way of solving some of this problem motif. One thing I think that teams are going to have to be able to face here is having higher throughput through some sort of indexing mechanism. So indexing on a servo may not be fast enough for you to be able to get a high enough throughput through on your system. So changing these over a motors might be pretty beneficial for teams or having quite a high gear ratio on that servo. In any case, excellent work having that indexer set up. Next up here, we've got Team Zap. Uh, this is something we've seen before and in a previous season, but now they've got a few magnets set up on their indexer here so that they can have a hall effect as well as a color sensor to be able to measure where the ball is inside of this indexed section. Uh, so that they're able to know when they're allowed to things make things outtake and then when they're allowed to also allow things to come in and intake around for calibrating. I think that's a really cool, that's a really unique mechanism. And then they've also added in some little guides here. So it makes it a little bit easier for that ball to actually come into that uh, center scoop gate. I was a little curious to see how well that center scoop gate works, but it seems to actually be picking up the ball quite well uh, and then being able to rotate itself around. Another question I do have is if they run into multiple balls and they're only showing one ball pick up at a time, which is fair, how they might be able to get some more throughput on this system so that they can have uh, more balls coming in at once in a rapid succession. And I think we're going to have this bit of, at least in this early meta season, it's not quite sure how these things are shaping out yet, whether it makes more sense to be able to index things, whether it makes more sense to have a higher throughput through on these robots. Next up, I want to show up from Little Potato Robotics here. They've got a pretty uh, functional looking transfer mechanism here. They've got a few compliant wheels with some vectored wheels here, some belts running along, and then it looks like surgical tubing that is just really loosely bent here, and it is quite flat all the way up. Now, I do really like this surgical tubing as a section here. We can see it at the start of the video. Oh, let's go back. We can see at the start of the video here that it's quite open and loose right at the start. And uh, as it goes in, it actually is rubbing against this flat section because there's just so much extra, extra length on these. But it does make it easy for it to be able to force that ball up. You can actually see that these boot kickers of this surgical tube is so long that as it comes up into this ball here, let's get rid of the pause. Let's see if we can find a frame that has that. We can actually see right here, that's the end of one of those surgical tubes. So the surgical tube is so long, it's actually reaching up able to force that ball up and into their intake, which is a really interesting way of bringing around. And I think it's also just a, a great way of bringing it up. They may find that need to replace these surgical tubes a bit because there can be quite a bit of rubbing. So if they were to add some sort of a lower friction system here, that might make their life just a little bit easier in terms of that repair. Next up, let's move into some different autonomouses that are happening. Uh, I want to show off a nine artifact motif here from FTC Quality Control. It is this top left robot here. Really solid work to be able to have three popping up quite quickly. Now, I don't believe this robot is capable of sorting at the moment. It doesn't look like it is because we're going purple, purple, green, and then it fires purple. Oh, it might actually be capable of sorting because we've got purple, purple, green, and then we're just going to pick up a purple, green, purple. So we'll see if it's capable of firing again in a purple, purple, green motif. If it is, excellent work on that. They've got some sort of mechanism here to be able to have automatic shifting or automatic uh, sorting on the robot. Super cool. I wish we could get a closer look at this robot to be able to see how it is they're doing it, but it almost looks like they've got the ability to have an intake on both sides of the robot too, which is really interesting. So they clearly have an intake. Oh no, it's not an intake. It's only on one side. Looks like the if we get a quick view of the robot up here, it looks like they've got some sort of rotating column over here that allows it to uh, switch which one's actually able to run through in its robot. Let's see if we can catch ourselves another frame here once it picks it up. Looks like we've got three up in here, and it might be easier if we do this. So it looks like it's got a three little gate that it then is able to push it in. Really impressive work from team uh, 21229 quality control. Nice job on that uh, autonomous. Next up, we've got a 12 artifact auto here from Unimate. Uh, and we actually have a few different 12 artifact autonomouses here that show up. 
I think this is going to be one of those interesting ideas with a 12 artifact autonomous, and we really see it in the next robot. Super impressive work to have solo work. And I believe that Unimate here has a, a rotating spin indexer in the center of their uh, robot as well, so it's capable of uh, indexing balls as it's launching so that it can keep things up inside of their patterns. Uh, I believe that these three are not correctly lined up as well, but it looks like don't we'll pick them up. But one thing I do want to talk about here with that 12-point autonomous is right here, we've got this one here. We've got Team Droid Force. Uh, and I want you to focus on this blue robot up here. And you've got Team uh, 2403. They come up and they park and they stay there. Now you've got more coming up here. And I don't know if this is because this robot stopped. It looks like it was intentional. But right about here, I... This is the one thing I'm I'm curious about on a 12 point about whether that is good uh, strategy or not inside. Yes, they can still get another three balls to be able to launch in. I think it's not the greatest manners to not have stopped their robot to not run it. This isn't one to call the team out for this. I think it's really impressive to have 12 going through, but you do have to think about your robot as it goes in and how it's going to interact with your other robot and just how much you want to get absolute points at all costs versus being a good teammate as well. Especially perhaps talking, it looks like something did go wrong there. Oh no, they're not allowed to pick it up. So it looks like something did, it looks like it's not actually intentional. I think they're just picking something up because they just stopped it quick there. But they're really going to have to think about how you want to work with your teammates because as they push team 2403 out of the way, that's actually stopping 2403 from being able to get three points, which is a thing. I mean, yes, I know they just got an additional nine points in being able to throw another balls, but it also stops from being able to get that ranking point as well, or uh, lowers their chances of being able to get that ranking point, because now this robot is no longer counting as leaving that launch line. Uh, we also have a pretty solid auto from this team over here, but they're also not leaving that launch line. And I think that teams are forgetting about that ranking point that comes up. So this isn't necessarily to call out this team here of 23849. But it is more of a, uh, a conversation to have with your team about that. Another one I want to take a look at here is Team 5237 is Loose Screws. I think this is a great little autonomous being nice and close. They've got pretty quick high throughput provided that are nice and close. I like seeing this little uh, quick intake that teams are starting to show up on now. And it's just this little, uh, little bit of compliance. Grab it, controlling it, really solid work. Get up nice and close to the goal. Launching in three, nice and quick, and you can see pretty happy with that. Very solid work, uh, and uh, I think the next step for this team is going to be able to make sure they can launch from the uh, goal a little bit further away might help them up. But I also love having these large plastic bumpers for the wheels. There's going to be a lot more defense being played, and that's really going to help out uh, protect their robot a little bit as well. Last thing I want to show off is a 143 uh, point here, 140 solo from uh, 16 uh, 688 i just think it's a really solid showing from a robot altogether that's a, quite an impressive little piece of tech here they've also done a really good job of showing us off from team uh, wolf botics as well here so very solid autonomous getting yourself up we'll go ahead and skip through into how they start playing on the teleop section as well one thing I want to highlight is at the end of the autonomous they've parked in an advantageous position where now they can come up and hit that gate when they want and be able to get it up and running. I think that's really solid. They can grab those balls and then start firing away. It looks like they're storing the balls in on the side here, and perhaps they have uh, some sort of way of being able to index that. I think we're going to start seeing a lot more of creative ways that teams are starting to sort out their balls as well. So I'm curious how your team is doing in this season. Let me know in the comments down below. If you want access to more robotics resources, things like CAD files, things like code snippets, and then some one-on-one -on -one feedback from myself, you can consider joining the robotics community down below as well. If you want to get your robot featured in one of these FTC Fridays, there's also a form down below in the description. As always, best of luck out there this FTC season.